I think people all know the orbital uh, cycle, or they think they know that there is a precession which acts at a free, uh, about 20 kilo years, the, the, num the time cycles, and tilt, which is 41, and eccentricity, uh, known around 100 and 400 kilo year cycle. And uh, this is are due to the fact that uh, Earth is going on uh, ex eccentric eccentric uh, orbital orbits, I'm sorry, and also it has a, uh, the North Pole is not uh, centered on the uh, perpendicular to the ecliptic. So precession, in fact, is a wobble of uh, the Earth around its, um, its axis, and uh, the, it points every uh, 10,000 years to different stars, North stars now, and Vega, it was uh, 10,000 years ago also. And this has no consequence at all if uh, we were not in an elliptical um, uh, orbit. Oh, right. This is, and because we are an elliptical orbit, the sun is not centered on uh, um, uh, the center of the of the circle that make Earth around it, and uh, it goes, and we don't notice it. Uh, uh, to we are going closer to the sun one time one uh, in in January, or and la long uh, far away from the sun. Uh, right now in, in June and July. Um, and this has a strong consequence on uh, the, what we call precession. In fact, right now, we are, during, at the winter, close to the sun, and during the summer, far from the sun. But 100,000 years ago, it was exactly the reverse. And this has a strong consequence on the energy received um, uh, re receive on Earth. For example, uh, right now, in, in the winter, we, we receive uh, uh, 1,420 watts per square meter. In fact, in, in June or July, we re receive a little bit less. If it's warmer right now on, on uh, the northern hemisphere, it's because uh, the, of the tilt but at the equator, it's a little bit colder. We don't notice it really right now, but in fact, it has strong implication when we go to the climate. And what is, people think that orbital cycle and Milankovitch cycle are exactly the same. In fact, it's not exactly true. Milankovitch, in the, about 100 years ago, and uh, described the fact that uh, the orbit uh, was produced, could change the ice volume of the Earth. And this was, uh, he realized that the energy received at the top of the, of, uh, the atmosphere uh, in high latitude had an effect on ice. And um, therefore, um, we can go from the in insulation at 600 degree north in the summer, which is on the left, um, uh, diagrams, which is an, an evolutionary uh, uh, periodograms, and you see the white, uh, the yellow line, which correspond to the uh, an, uh, a cycle of 20, 23 kilo year cycle here, 19 and, and 41, the tilt. And here you have the insulation uh, record. And this, you see, there is no 100 kilo year cycle in this. It's because, in fact, the, the eccentricity is just a modulation of the precession. So, in fact, when, when you are looking at the insulation at 665 degree north in the summer, you don't see any um, eccentricity. That means the 100 kilo year cycle. But when you look at records, for example, ice volume, the 100 kilo year cycle for the last 800,000 years is extremely important. You see the ice volume record here. It doesn't look at all like the insulation. And it is related to the, um, to the fact that there is a nonlinear response of the ice. The ice sheets were very large in, and their variation were very large in the last 800,000 years. And so they, they, 
they were growing very slowly and uh, uh, decay very rapidly. And this response of the eyes produced the fact that they were not able to grow and de decay uh, at 23 kilo year cycle. And so they, they jumped to the, to the long term response at 100, 100,000 years, uh, 100 kilo year uh, period. And before, the ice volume was not that large, and so they were responding to the 41 and before to the 20K. So in fact, it, the fact that we have a 100 kilo year cycle in many re, uh, paleoceanographic records for the last million years is because the ice sheets were extremely large, which it was not the case before. Um, and so the 100 kilo year cycle dominates the climate since 800,000 years, but it's also most of the paleoclimatic archives uh, have this 100 kilo year cycle. For example, here on the right panel, you have a, a record of uh, temperature in red, sea surface temperature in the Western Pacific warm pool, the place where you, f you could think that is the less the least um, influenced by high latitude and ice because you are in the warmest place in the ocean. And you see that here you have the temperature of the sea surface is following the 100 kilo year cycle because of the ice volumes, uh, the, sea level, uh, the sea level change, and also the salinity variation follows the 100 kilo year cycles. And when you go in the 40, 41 kilo years realm, which is a tilt, and then you have, you see that temperature and salinity are following the 40 kilo year cycle. So the ice volume has an extremely strong influence on the ocean and on the continent's climates. So most of the, most of the paleoclimatic archive show this. And uh, some time ago, I produced a record. I was interested in a core located south of India, of the Maldives. And uh, here I was looking at the percentage of Florisfera profunda compared to the over Coccolito force. And to my big surprise, here you have the record with the yellow dots. And here the same record of de the same core with delta O18 in red and uh, percent of carbonate in blue. And you see that percent of carbonate and especially delta O18, which represents a, um, a combination of sea level, rise, sea level and um, temperature and salinity, you don't have at all the same dynamics. And what is very interesting is that the, blue, the pink dots are following the yellow line, which is precession, which is in fact the insulation in low latitudes, which, which drives um, there's variations. So here in red, you have the periodogram, and you see that the, um, here you, on, on the right part, you have the high frequency, on the low part, the, the low frequency, and the precession here is very well marked in this record. Instead, here, the, on the carbonate in blue, and the, the periodogram is in, in yellow, you see that the precession is extremely small and the, you have a strong 100 kilo year cycle. Instead here you have two bits and you have a, four, a 400, 122, 93, and a small 41. And so this is a very different. Coccolito fours plays a high pitch and um, the, the climate, in fact, the base. And so this is why there, there is such a difference. This was very um, important for, for my research and I, I, I tried to understand and in fact it was the answer was given a little bit earlier than my work by Barbara Molfino and Andrew McIntyre is the fact that Flores Far Profunda is uh, living in the deep uh, bio, uh, in the deep photic zone at the limit of um, they are living in a place where most of the uh, phytoplankton don't are not able to grow. Instead, this uh, phytoplankton has the possibility to grow in low light. And because they are in the lowest part of the photic zone, they, they, receive, they have a lot of nutrients. Instead, when you are at the surface, there is less nutrients because they are used by most of the, most of the phytoplankton, especially that they, they take out most of the nutrients. And so there is a, 
when you have a lot, lot of uh, chlorophyll in the surface is where because you have an, en an enhancement of the surface due to upwelling, for example, of uh, nutrients at the surface, and then you have a high biomass and coccolithophores are ben take benefit from it and they, they, they survive at the surface and they, they live very well. And instead, Floresa profunda has no advantage to be in this ar in area. But when in the, in the central gyres, central ocean gyres, where the stratification is very strong, the nutrients are limited at the surface. So the abundance of um, most of the phytoplankton, except Floresa profunda, which live at the, at the depth. And so we were able to, to produce uh, a transfer function for primary production using uh, Floris Farra Profunda, and we did that. And uh, uh, last year, Hernandez Almeida uh, produced uh, a new one, a, a new transfer function, which is uh, with more um, core tops taken. Here it was just Indian Ocean core tops, and they, they produce a, a beautiful uh, um, database of uh, all the ocean, and the, the transfer function is very similar to, to what I produced uh, 10 years, 20 years ago. And so we can look, here the time is going to the, to the right as modelers, is because I produced this paper some time ago with modelers, and uh, they wanted me to put uh, the, the time backward for me. So. Here you have 150,000 years ago and zero here. At the, at, and here you have the cycles and you see Floris Farra Profunda, which is going in cycles, precession cycle. And you see here the 23 kilo year cycle is, is the most prominent. And here you have the delta weighting and it's very different again from this one. And it's very surprising because the core where it's lo is located north of Australia, close to the Arafura shelf. So in fact, this core here is now under the, under the Arafura Sea. This, uh, this plateau, but uh, 10,000 years ago or 20,000 years ago, it was exonded because it was, it was dry because of sea level. And so the coast was very close to the, to the shore, in fact, here. Instead, now it's far away. And you see the deglaciation is here, and there is no event for the Coccolito Falls. So in fact, productivity in this area was not, was not uh, following temperature of the sea, was not and was not following also uh, the, the fact that the sea level change. And they were purely going through precession, which is quite uh, uh, striking. And so there is a kind of a, a difference between most of the uh, 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 proxies of uh, um, Climates and and phytoplankton, I would say, because it's not only the coccolito force, but productivity is not following uh, the uh, pre, uh, the global climate. Another thing that is interesting, uh, Jorincia spoke about uh, size of uh, coccolites, and here I compare in the same curve that I presented before. Uh, the, the ratio between the two sides of uh, Jeffero Capsa, the large one and the small one, and I, I was producing uh, I sometimes in core tops and also in ratios, the ratio be be uh, and in the core, and I have the same results by Floris Far Profunda. So there is a relation between the size and the productivity, apparently, at least in the central Indian Oceans. The same thing is work this was my first work during my PhD. I was looking at the, at the difference between reticular fenestra, small one and large one. And here on the left in the myosin, I had the ratio between small and large reticular fenestra. And also it was following a 20 kilo year cycle. And this was not always the case because in fact, on the right, you see the record of these two cores which were located in the, in the North Atlantic. And here is a um, uh, upper Miocene, and here you are close to the Pliocene Miocene boundary, and you see that there is a kind of a di divergence in size. They are pro uh, reticular fenestra at one mode, and they become uh, bimodal in the both sides. And it's in this area, in the place where it's bimodal, that I produce these two records. 
So there is a kind also of evolutionary trend in between the, this, um, uh, these groups. So size matter. Recently, Bandif et al. produced a paper showing that genetics is uh, evol evolving uh, in terms of uh, recurrently they, they, they produce uh, different, uh, the gephyrocapsid, the reticular fenestra, but gephyrocapsid in that case, produce a change in size every uh, um, about 500,000 years. Here is gephyrocapsid cariabenica, which produce a different species uh, that uh, are Gifirocapsa oceanica to Emiliania, uh, Emiliania exlehai and Gifirocapsa parvula. And so the, their um, genetic difference are uh, size difference. And all the, uh, the size, co call it uh, Gifirocapsa species, have evolved uh, because of their size and they were produced by one ancestor which lived 500,000 years ago. And so they were events before and increase a little bit like uh, uh, Jeremy also showed that in a reticular fenestra as I do in the previous slide that I, I showed. So this is an important thing that I wanted to, to understand what was going on in the pleistocene. And so I produced, uh, I, I was not alone, uh, on uh, Clara Bolton and Baptiste also, uh, helped me to produce these eight records from this area uh, in the Central Pacific, uh, in the Western Pacific and Eastern Indian Ocean. And we, pr we, we look at uh, a lot of samples and produce a combination record of uh, coccolith length here. And you see from uh, the play, uh, Pleiopleistocene boundary to the present, the, the size of the gephyrocapsids in terms of coccolith length. And you see that it goes from different cycles and there are time of which is bimodal and time where it's not bimodal. And usually what we noticed is that the size, the average length of the coccoliths are following uh, the 400 kilo year cycle, which is, which is here. But it was, uh, it was difficult to understand this uh, to, to understand what was going on because you have different spaces and just one record. So we tried to produce a, syst a systematic um, uh, index, what we call delta mass, and which is the ratio between um, the difference between the large coccolith, the, the mass of the large coccolith minus the, the, the mass of the sorry, the, of the small coccolith. For example, here, je, the mass in this sample, the mass of Gephyrocapsa minus the, the mass of Gephyrocapsa ericksonii, Oceanica minus ericksonii, and you have a large delta mass. And here, in, in the, where um, Gephyrocapsa cariabenica is, very, there is only unimodal, so the delta mass is very, very small. And we, if we produce the delta mass in all records, so he, on the nine records, the stack is made is a red curve, and the data from each core is the black the black dots. And you see that in every record from every in all the, the area, which is quite large, but we we where we try to to do our, our work, we, where we did our work, and they are extremely parallel. They are all the same. So we can use is because. It is an evolutionary system and not uh, ecological. This is uh, the evolution, evolution of the coccolithophores that is represented by the delta mass. So we can perform a spectral analysis on it, and we see that here you have the 100 kilo year bar, 100 kilo years, and there is no eccentric, no precession, no tilt. This is just eccentricity. This is different. Here is a delta weighting. I pre already presented this. And here you have the 100 kilo year cycle in the delta weighting for the last 8,000 years. And here you have the 40 kilo year cycle. Here you don't have anything here. It's very smooth. And you, you have a, a strong uh, 100 kilo year cycle and 400 kilo year cycle for the last 20,000 years. And this is the record and the, the coherency here between um, insulation or precession, uh, 
sorry, eccentricity in black here, and this re delta mass record, and here you have a strong coherency. And as I, I, I told you before, uh, delta O18, for example, so ice level, is as only 100 kilo year cycle in the last 800,000, and here there is only 40,000 years and nothing else. No 100 kilo year cycle, no eccentricity. And in the ice volume, there is neither a, a 40 kilo year cycle. Here you can see it, here it is. There is a, a, a 400 kilo year cycle in this record, which is quite strong. And so this is extremely strange, uh, not strange, but we we have we think that the eccentricity is driven a change in um, seasonality in low latitudes, and using this uh, seasonality produce a large number of ecological niches in which uh, when you have a, a, lar a large eccentricity, in, in that case, for example, here, at the equator, the, you create a seasonality which doesn't exist right now at the equator. And here, you, have, um, you produce uh, ecological niches which are different between summer and winter, and then you, um, many species can evolve. Instead, when the eccentricity is very low, there is almost no seasonality at the, at the equator, and therefore there is no, um, uh, there is only few species. The ecological niche are uh, limited. And this change in number of niches pro produce these evolution curves. And um, we can, this is just the last example that I produce here. So here you have the precision with the ratio between small and large zephyrocapsa in light blue, and you see it follows the precision here very well. Instead, the delta mass, which is evolutionary, there is almost no uh, uh, precession, but there is the eccentricity with the android kilo year cycle, which is here. So in fact, uh, with delta mass, we follow the evolution, which is different from uh, ice volume, for example. And here, with uh, uh, um, the ratio between different species of Jephyrocapsa, we follow precession. So my conclusion, uh, we have a stri st striking feature of Coccolito 4's ecology and evolution is their dynamics cannot be related to global climates. And as most paleoceanographic proxies, the reason is season. The season are extremely important for Coccolito 4's. And, and this is why I think paleoceanography of co using Coccolito 4's is very interesting because we are looking at a different angle uh, from uh, other paleoceanographers which look at annual cycles. Uh, th their proxy are always annual. Instead, when you look at uh, phytoplanktons, you are looking at seasonality which behave very differently from uh, most uh, over proxies. And the evolution, I think, is the second part of my talk, is related to uh, season also and eccentricity. And this is very different from uh, the Milankovitch cycles. So this is a very different type of cycle, which I could have a very strong uh, impact on uh, older climates because you know that in pre-quaternary sedimentary record, also sometimes we find 100 and 400 kilo year cycles that cannot be related to global um, ice volume because the ice volume were often limited in this period. And why do you have a 100, 100 kilo year cycle and 400 kilo year cycle? This is a mystery. And maybe this is because of the production of uh, carbonate fluxes of uh, carbonate by Coccolito 4s, which changes on this value. So evolution could influence the sedi sedimentary record. Thank you.